So here's your microphone. You got three minutes. Thank you. Can you add 15 seconds? Or is it kind of <laughs> so, I get to address you as a candidate. Normally I'm doing the, the weekly updates, and it's still strange for me to be talking politics and talking as a, as a representative or a candidate, because I never thought I'd be in politics, never wanted to be in politics, but I simply got to a point, I got uh, three years ago, very frustrated. I couldn't understand how things were happening in our community, in our state, in our country. And from the outside, it just mystified me. And although I always followed politics, I never was actually in it. How could our county go from record property tax revenue and in one year, after all that tax revenue, just be out of money? And then how could that repeat itself you know, across the state and the debt we're getting into in the federal government? So my background is I'm a businessman, not a politician. I built up a business from the ground up that I'm very proud of. We have some of them here today. We're members of the Palmetto Bay Business Association as our, our business. We provide services to, to doctors and our practices, and we do all the things that doctors don't like to do. And, and it's been a lot of work to get that going. It was many years of struggle, but now I'm very proud that our organization has over 700 employees, 100 uh, plus doctors that work for us and more 50 practices across the across the county. And once you're in as a politician and once you're in the process, all the stereotypes you see from the outside and you think like could it really be that bad? Could decisions really be made with that little knowledge? I I'm here to tell you it's true. I mean it's absolutely true. I am the only CPA in the Florida legislature. It's a $70 billion budget, and I'm one of the few that actually has the, the background to understand that budget. And although my whole background is from the private sector and building small business and building business, my real passion up in Tallahassee is in education. I am the only non-educator in my family. I come from a family of educators. My mom was a teacher, my sisters are current Dade County public school teachers, I'm a product of our public schools and my kids go around the corner to Coral Reef Elementary. Because I firmly believe that the future for our business, the future for our state and our, for our community, is the excellence and quality of our public schools. So I ask you this November, I ask for your vote, I'd be honored to have your vote, and what I pledge to you and I promise to you is that I will honor your promise to always honor your, your vote, and I always promise to put common sense principles above petty politics. Thank you so much, and I think I made my three minutes, right? And now the challenger, Doc Solomon, couldn't be here today, so Susan's going to represent him and uh, give us an introduction. I'm sorry, he was, he was um, stuck, not stuck, but busy dealing with his patients and making sure they're being taken care of, so that's why I'm here today, otherwise he would have been here. Pardon? The purpose of government is to serve the common good of community. It is not a team sport, it is not about red versus blue and Republicans versus Democrats. Where one side, okay, sorry. Where one must, one side must win and the other must lose. I represent Dr. Jeffrey Solomon, and he is running for the Florida House of Representatives in District 115, which it includes all of Palmetto Bay. He believes strongly in teamwork, principles, and supporting ideas that are right for our community. Ideas not strictly based on partisan philosophies. He is just disturbed by partisan and fighting and overstand politics. It's time for real solutions and common sense to be brought to Tallahassee. The way he's fixed his patients is the way he wants to fix Florida. Florida's public education is not funded adequately and it has crippled our ability to serve our children's best interests or attract business to our state. Dr. Solomon wants to prioritize increased funding while working to create methods of improving accountability to reduce waste and corruption in our state and local education systems. Dr. Solomon does not support any legislation to 
diverting our hard-earned taxpayers' dollars to for-profit school corporations. Instead, as in the case of the $1.2 billion public school bond initiative, he does support promoting private-public partnership to enhance public schools capital improvements that develop jobs in our communities, especially in Palmetto Bay. Today in Florida, we are far better prepared for a violent windstorm that we were in 1992 when Andrew struck South Florida. Presently, there is a tremendous burden on property owners and their ability to remain in their homes in addition to Florida's weakened ability to attract growth due to increased costs by Citizens Property Insurance Corporation. Dr. Solomon will hold insurers responsible and control the rising costs. Please vote for Dr. Jeffrey Solomon, Doc, for the Florida House of Representatives. He is truly an independent voice. Plus, he's been in this, in this community for over 20 years, dealing with his patients and his children are in the public school system. So his main thing is making sure that his community is well taken care of and his children have a great education. He's got a, a, an older daughter in, in college right now and now a, a 15 month old son. So he's got five, to four children and a range of from all ages. So he's got them on all sides. So I appreciate it and I just hope you can vote for Dr. Jeffrey Solomon. Next we have, and I uh, know we would have gone first with her uh, because she is a, a state senator, Quinn Margolis, please come up. And uh, she, now, we're not in her district yet, uh, but the, the district that's, that is there is going to be realigned. And so January 1 is when the district changes and it encompasses uh, us in Palmetto Bay. That's correct. I go, I, I've been representing uh, just just a little north of you to Bearing Bay for the past ten years. I'm your senator, or I'm their senator, <laughs> about to uh, about to inherit you. And uh, many of you know me very very well. As a matter of fact, many of you come to visit me every year in Tallahassee. We've all spent time together. I've I've given you uh, the philosophy of how the government was going. For those for those years, and and generally, I know the people here, and you know me. Uh, let me let me start with. I've been around for several decades. That's 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 really it's really nice, and it's really important that you have someone in Tallahassee that has the institutional knowledge to tell you exactly what's going to happen in every issue that comes up. That's needed in Tallahassee. You just heard Rep. Representative Boleka say, uh, knowledge and experience is important. The legislature is going to turn over about 50% because of the changes in districts this year. Knowledge is important. It is important to have representatives who understand the process and can go forward and do what they have to do. I can tell you that I, I started in, in, in the 70s in 1990 to 92, I was the president of the Florida Senate. I was the first woman in the country to be president of the Florida Senate. After that, I went to the county commission and served as their chairman for six of eight years that I was there. Went back to the Florida Senate, and I tell you that I understand the process, I understand our community, I understand your communities, I can tell you also that I, I was the person who incorporated Aventura, Sunny Isles Beach, Key Biscayne. They were all in my district, and they're just like you. They're way better off being cities than they were in the county. Uh, I'm looking forward to the vote in November, and I'm certainly looking forward to, to the support of this wonderful city, and uh, I hope you vote for Gwen Margolis. Thank you. And the challenger, John Correll. Did I pronounce that right? Good. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me. I'm John Correll, and I've never run for office before, but I have served you. 
Uh, I grew up in this community. My father arrived here on September 25, 1961 as part of Operation Pedro Pan. He and 14,000 other, 14, other young Cuban men and women grew up because uh, of the dream that their parents had for them and the willingness to serve that our country gave them. They grew up in the arms of strangers who believed that anything was possible in America, and I'm running because I want to perpetuate that dream for your children and for mine. Uh, my dad lived that dream. He was a tile setter and worked on his knees, and I never forgot that. And it was that work that propelled me to the dream that my grandparents had for him. I worked my way through Harvard College. I worked my way through Harvard Law School. Don't be impressed. I did it basically to chase a nice Jewish girl from Miami Beach, uh, who, I, who I ultimately married. She's a pulmonary critical care specialist. She did everything I did a little better. She graduated summa and valedictorian of her class from Johns Hopkins Medical School, and she's the mother of our two young children. Uh, we came home uh, when I was given the opportunity to serve you as a federal prosecutor, and I worked as an assistant United States attorney in the most critical time, in the most critical area uh, in that office. I fought Medicare fraud, identity theft, the sexual exploitation of minors, and important to the business community, all manner of frauds that uh, are victimizing our business leaders. Identity theft is a plague upon all of the small retailers. I see you nodding your heads. And the United States Attorney's Office here in the Southern District of Florida has done more identity theft prosecution than any other in the United States. The same is true for Medicare fraud. And I decided, after being downstream of the policy failure, that it was time for some new leadership that it was time for a new voice for our community, and that it was time for somebody to stand up and say, enough is enough, it's time for some new leadership for District 35. And that's why I decided to run. It's a critical, critical time for our community. There are 900,000 working age men and women in Miami-Dade County who cannot read and write in the English language. There are 200,000 working age men and women in Miami-Dade County who have less than a ninth grade education. And with numbers like those, it's no wonder that the Homestead Air Reserve base lies fallow that we can't attract a Pfizer or a Genzon to South Dade, real economic investment in South Dade, to change the game for us. And it's to give that kind of political leadership, to be a new voice for workforce development and economic development and lasting prosperity that I've decided to run. I also believe very, very strongly that we need measurable progress out of our schools. That means the ability to gauge what's happening and to be able to reward excellence. And I also believe that it's never been a more important time to have a market-based voice for healthcare and healthcare excellence in our community. And finally, I know that windstorm insurance matters greatly to this community. I'm going to be a vigorous advocate for your interests. I'm not asking you to honor me here today. I'm not asking you to recognize my service. I'm asking you to hire me. To hire me to be your energetic voice. I'm not going to be outworked in your interests. I'm not going to be surpassed in seeking what's best for South Dade and all of South, and all of South Florida. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Now we get to the local races, which are, uh, we get to have the people come up that we know very well. And so we're going to start with the, uh, the uh, vice mayor. All right. Uh, are you going first here? Come on up. And you will get to meet candidates. Good afternoon. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Dr. Thomas and the Palmetto Bay Business Association for allowing me to come in today and introduce myself to the business community. So I want to give you a brief snapshot of who I am, why I'm running, um, a little bit about uh, what my vision might be as Vice Mayor of Palmetto Bay, and then why I think my skills set, sets me apart from the other candidates. So who I am, I'm uh, born and raised here in Miami-Dade County, I'm a 27-year veteran of Miami-Dade County Public Schools, 18 of those years I was in a first grade classroom, the last nine years I've been an advocate for teachers, students, and public education with United Teachers of Dade. I am the mother of Megan, 22, so she's here today with me. 17-year um, resident of Palmetto Bay, so I was here at the inception of uh, incorporation. So why am I running? I feel like in the past many months, there has been, I've seen a disconnect between our local government and the residents that they serve. And so I decided to jump into the race because I want to be able to give the residents of Palmetto Bay a, uh, some options in terms of candidates. I've walked now about 800 homes, and the things that the residents are talking about are the things that I think need to resonate within our council. They're talking about wasteful spending. They point to things like Palmer Trinity and uh, the concession stand at uh, Coral Reef and the lot of park. They want us to provide more services that will enhance the quality of life in Palmetto Bay. They talk about a possibly a neighborhood downtown area, 
They're talking about neighborhood safety, infrastructure, and they want all of those things with the lowest taxes possible. What I would propose as Vice Mayor of Palmetto Bay is twofold. One, I would like to create a strategic plan for our community by surveying our community. It's been done very successfully in other communities, neighboring communities, and come up with what the priorities are for our residents and use those priorities to move forward for the next five years in Palmetto Bay. I'd also like to conduct a forensic analysis of our budget and management practices uh, as helped by the current council so that we can see if we can find efficiencies within our government to help lower taxes. I really do believe as a committed member of the very dedicated to our community that we need to work together and start mending some fences. Uh, my experience, my skill set has been in consensus building, coalition building, and I think that the quality of the folks that have endorsed me speaks to my character and my ability to come, come up with compromise and negotiations. I'm very proud to have Dr. Larry Feldman's endorsement. Thank you very much. Mayor Jean Flynn, Representative Dwight Bullard, Senator Alex Villalobos, the professors at Miami Dade College, and the teachers at the United Teachers of Dade, as well as many others. Um, and I would just ask for your support coming up November 6th on ballot number 165. Thank you. John Dubois is uh, out of town, but he has a uh, representative going to, going to come up. Is that correct? So I'm going to read, read the statement. Good afternoon. Uh, John had a prior business in, uh, engagement, so he asked me to uh, read a prepared statement for him. John DeWaz is running for Vice Mayor of Palmetto Bay in, a, in order to better serve the community's uh, residents. The key word in his campaign is serve, a word that Mr. DuBois believes should be the guiding principle of conduct of every elected leader. He believes the council members have lost touch with their constituents and failed to serve the needs and interests of residents as a whole. He points to the enormous cost of the fight against Palmer Trinity School and fiscally irresponsible capital spending, such as the one million dollar hot dog stand at Coral Reef Park, two of the many examples of mismanagement of taxpayers' money. John believes we have a crime rate in Palmetto Bay that has gone through the roof in the last year because of the bad economy. Most of you in this room know two or three neighbors or friends who have been victims of uh, robbery. Our tax dollars should be better spent investing in police instead of frivolous litigation. John is also the advocate for a Cops on Bikes program to improve the police officers' awareness of the needs of the community. As president and CEO of ICAST, Mr. Dubois brings to the table his corporate business experience and analytical skills in making informed and objective decisions. In his business, integrity, fiduciary responsibility, and customer service are keys to success. ICAST is a technology company that he started four years ago, bringing new jobs to South Florida. Mr. Dubois started his career as an engineer and has been in the telecommunications industry ever since graduating from college. He attended American University in Washington, D.C., where he earned a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration and Economics and a Master's in Technology uh, Management. Mr. Dubois has served on the board of directors of the Deering Estate Foundation, and he is a member of the Village of Palmetto Bay Street Committee. He is most passionate about assisting the homeless community and has been serving on the board of directors for Camilla's House for the last eight years, the largest service provider to the homeless in uh, Miami-Dade County. He is a member of the board of directors of uh, the office of, uh, he is a member of the board of directors of Miami-Dade County Office of Economic Development and International Trade. He serves on the board of uh, directors of uh, Camilla's Health Concerns also, which provides health services to those who cannot afford medical treatment. He is also a member of the Educate Tomorrow Advisory Board, which provides foster care children who are aging out of the, out of the system with education and life skills training. For more information, uh, please visit www.johndubois.com or contact him directly at 786-888-4000. Thank you kindly. And wrapping up the uh, Vice Mayor of the Incumbent, Brian Garrison, where is Brian here? Is. Thanks, James, and thanks to the uh, Bay Business Association for having this event today. 
Uh, my name is Brian Parrister. I'm your public, I'm your vice mayor, and I've been that for the last four years. A little bit about me, if you don't know who I am, I moved here in 1992 after getting blown out of Country Walk and landed in Palmetto Bay with my wife and three children. And I'm an attorney for 38 years in Dane County. I have my own firm, Civil and Commercial Litigation and Homeowner Condominium Association Law. And I've always been civically active. Uh, I'm in public service. I view this job as public service. I have no hidden agenda. I have no desire for higher office. Uh, I was appointed by Dade County for the Incorporation Study Committee. Uh, when Aventura's Senator Margolis was saying and uh, the other cities were being incorporated and listened to the benefits of incorporation. And that was a vision that I fought for seven years as the Vice Chairman of the Steering Committee from 95 to 2002 to get us the right to vote for incorporation. Why? Very simple. We want a local government that will enhance the quality of our lives of our residents and enhance the value of our homes. And by doing that, we want to concentrate on the four P's, as I say. Municipal services, police, parks and recreation, public works, planning and zoning. That's what we should do. Keep government limited and keep taxes down. As a matter of fact, we have the sixth lowest millage rate out of 35 municipalities in Dade County. We have a double A bond rating for a municipality. Probably a handful of municipalities in Florida can boast that. We've had four years of unqualified audits from our auditor. I'm against waste, but I'm also for standing up for the homeowner's rights when they have to be stood up for. Now, going forward, and since this is a business organization, what have we done on the record? And you can check my record. I have a handout there. But additionally, what have we done for the business community? Because the business community, we need. And if you have happy residents, you'll have people wanting to move here that will go to your businesses. Now, Palmetto Bay is 92% of our tax portfolio portfolios are residential. We have 8% um, commercial. We want to bump that up. So therefore, we've concentrated in trying to bump up the commercial area, which is along Dixie Highway and the Franjo Triangle area. And what have I done since I've been elected? I've supported the Franjo Triangle concept. I've also supported the sewers going in so density can go up. But I've also supported the green ordinances that we've passed where if you are LEED certified, you get a bonus on, on uh, square footage and density. Uh, I've also supported community policing for the business area. As a matter of fact, if you haven't done so, pull a contact the police department for the ESIP program, Emergency Commercial Identification Program, where you will give your phone number for off-duty hours 24-7 to the police, if the police patrol your business and see there's a window uh, that's broken or a door ajar or what have you, they will call you immediately to respond to you. Um, also, I've supported the PACE program. That will help businesses in this area. As a matter of fact, the PACE program for energy efficiency, 60% in the past in California where it's been put in place, 60% of the use of that program comes from commercial entities. Uh, I, Okay, just just one more thing. Okay. 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 Thank you. We're going to move to District Two now. We've got three more candidates that are going to speak, and the uh, District Two is up. And the first one to come up is the incumbent, Howard Tedich. Said, I'm the incumbent. I was really surprised that I was going to really have any competition this time because I've done a pretty good job. Actually, I'd say an excellent job in the four years I've been up there. But you never know. Um, I, the thing that I uh, thing that, the big thing I bring I brought to the county or village was transparency in government. Our check register is now online, so if you want to know where our money's going, you can go to the check register and I'll show you where it is. We also now have our Cow meetings and our village meetings are streamed live video and also if you don't have uh, I think it's uh, Comcast you can just go right to the village site and watch it and sometimes the meetings can be pretty interesting but it's not you can see the way that people really are in our village under our little government. Um, I think uh, we now our big problem that is over with and three years ago. I had suggested to the council that we 
stopped the fight with Palmer. It's, the judge told us, hey, it's over, stop, but it continued for an extra few years. So when you read articles that say people, well, you know, we need to get rid of the council because they did this thing with Palmer. The council did it, but I wasn't part of that council vote that said, okay, let's keep on fighting. I think that's, it's, it gets me upset when I read the articles because I was not that part of the uh, group. We now have a new, uh, what we thought was going to be a new problem, and it could be, it was going to be called the Neighborhood Protection Ordinance. Well, now, instead of being one ordinance with many set sections, it's become an ordinance by, we have like eight different ordinances that are all separate and will not become an NPO. One of the ones that I think is really, uh, it's, well, it's wasted a lot of time and money for us. But one of the things that's on there is that we could not hold a meeting in a facility like this now. Because a facility a, a, uh, cannot rent what they're trying to pass, cannot rent their facility out to another uh, group. And they, it just is wrong. I mean, we, there's no other place in Palmetto Bay where we could meet that would hold this many people. And the other one is, and I think it's a misconception, is our thought about after a hurricane or a serious a tornado came by and tore your house down, about 51% gone. It's true that if the variances that were on your property have not changed, you can rebuild it to exactly what it was. But if there have been changes, you have to now abide by the new changes. And we're, they're trying to, we're, well, they're proposing to put in some heavy setbacks. And if you had a property that was zoned X and you got variances, just because those variances were there at the time, they were gone after the uh, 20, seconds. 20 seconds. Okay. But one thing then I just, I use as, a, I use a lot of common sense, and that's why I vote that way. But then one thing I want you all to really think about is MDX is trying to put an above road expressway on top of US 1 flight busway. I think you really need to learn about it because it's very important and I think would really be damaging to us. Thank you. The next person is uh, Tim Schaefer, who is in District 2. Challenger. Good afternoon. My name is Tim Schaefer. I'm asking residents of Palmetto Bay to allow me to be their representative on Village Council District 2. November 6th, I hope I'm going to have that honor. For 29 years, I've been a financial advisor. I am a sole proprietor for a, the independent office of Woodbury Financial Services, Inc. In those 20 years, or 29 years, I've had a lot of different clients. But the majority of my clients then and now are business owners. Small businesses, large business, all types of businesses. I've dealt with with uh, one-person companies to multi-thousand-person companies. I've dealt with uh, manufacturing firms to professional service firms, regular corporations, S-corporations, non-profits, not-for-profits, government organizations, a whole host of different companies and businesses. One of the main things that I've heard from all those businesses through all those years is government involvement in their business. Now, as a financial advisor, I've got to deal with every level of, uh, of government. And it is costly and it's, and it's time consuming. I deal from the, fed, from the federal level, the state level, the county level, to the city level. When I've been out talking to the people of Palmetto Bay and the residents and the business owners of Palmetto Bay, those business owners say pretty much the same thing. Business involvement in my, or Government involvement in my business is costly and time consuming. Now, everybody knows that business has to have some sort of government regulations and some sort of government programs in place. In fact, they talked about last night and today. Business owners are not saying, listen, government can stay completely out. But no, what they want to see governments do is, governments need to be there to put in systems than programs and put in uh, regulations that protect the consumer, protect the environment, and put businesses on an equal playing field. See, most of my clients have seen me more as a CFO than actually an advisor. And what I want to be able to do, because I've dealt in the business community, 
because I have seen businesses go from startup to the growth to income distribution to exit strategies to business continuation. I've seen all aspects of that. I'm able to, to represent business from understanding all that. That's what I want to bring to building government, is that understanding for the business owners. See, I understand that a business doesn't want government as their partner. They only want government to provide them the necessary support. So thank you for your time, and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And the last candidate, all right, uh, Tim Horizon went for the same position, the challenger. Hi folks, my name is Jim Ariza. I'm a proud member of the Plumbing Bay Business Association. I'm going to shake things up a little bit here. Uh, rather than speaking to you as a political candidate, since this is a group of business leaders and executives, I'm going to approach this more from the standpoint of a uh, job application. Because from my standpoint, I'm going to convince you that I'm the right guy to hire on November 6th. For those of you that don't know my uh, background, I. Uh, I grew up here in Palmetto Bay. I've been here since yay high, over 43 years. Um, got an accounting degree out of college. Became a certified public accountant, certified financial planner, open business. And as fate would have it, I was very, very fortunate to open two absolutely amazing businesses with the help of my two best friends. Um, my friend from childhood, Angel Alvarez, and I started a little business, an optical management advisory business. We used to rent rider trucks, buy contact lenses, sell them to doctors, and Angel handled all the marketing and stuff. I handled all the advice about uh, accounting and things like that. And I'm proud to tell you that little business grew to uh, what now is about 550 employees and controls about 27% of the optical uh, <clears throat> lens market in the United States. At the same time, my wife and I took our accounting practice and we revolutionized it into a uh, consulting firm for the yachting industry. In 2004, Forbes.com named our business the top private cruise company in the world. And I'm sharing that with you because I have 35 years of experience handling corporate and executive decisions. And that's what I think makes me the best candidate for this position, the best job applicant. Uh, I'm an expert in operational efficiency and customer service. And I think those are two really important disciplines to be a good councilman. And quite frankly, when you see a city that's about to dip into its reserves for over $2 million, I don't think it's a bad thing to sit back and look at the efficiencies. And when you see how divisive we've become in the last year or year and a half, I don't think it's bad to step back and say, are we doing the best job at customer service? When you hire me on November 6th, I'm going to take what I've learned over those 30 years and apply it to doing this job for you. And like an infomercial, I'm going to tell you right now, there's more. On November 6th, I'm going to bring a bonus to you. I will be the first council member to bring in a pro bono business advisory team. Right now, I'm bringing together people that are experts in marketing, finance, accounting, customer service, and operational efficiency. Those are the folks who are going to help me do this job for you. I'm going to close by telling you that I've been very, very fortunate. Much of my success and well-being comes from growing up in Palmetto Bay and the teachers and ministers and things that I had here. And if you hire me on November 6th, you're giving me the opportunity to give back to this community. Thank you very much. Let's give a warm welcome to all of the candidates. Thank you for coming out today.